Hey guys, it's me Naz. I had to just check if it was recording there. So now I wanted to share something um, in Titus chapter one, verses one to three. Okay, so Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. But hath in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. So that was the KJV. I'm going to read it in the ESV version. So Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness and hope of eternal life, which God, who never lies, promised before the ages began and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. So this is, that that was a greeting <laughs> of Paul. Okay, well, part of a greeting because he continues to greet um, Titus and, and, and those who will be reading this um, episode. So uh, now what struck out to me in this, these verses was uh, how Paul, um, he's a servant of God. That's how he introduces himself, but he, that he, but that he's an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. So God's elect, um, you could say it is the Jews, but in this instant, uh, instance, I believe it's uh, any, any believer, you know, we're like God's elect. We have been predestined, right, to uh, to be known by God, right, um, as a son of God, to be a child of God. Not because we are, um, you know, forced to believe or anything like that. It's just that God has known us, <laughs> uh, and has known that we would believe. Um, so now it says... And the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Let's read down here that their knowledge of the truth, whose knowledge the gods elect, their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness. That that phrase accords with godliness. I equate I, I saw it as knowing the truth, um, God considers a godliness. And and you know, some people may think, oh, godliness. Um, like cleanliness is next to godliness or something like that. Uh, that godliness is something outward, um, something that you show, like a behavior that you, you know, present to others, um, like good behavior or something like that. But it was interesting to, 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 to see here that the, your acknowledge, uh, acknowledgement of the truth, your knowledge of the truth of, of God, his word, um, you know, Jesus is the truth. The knowledge of Jesus is godliness. I mean, think about that. <laughs> knowing God is godly. You know, just knowing him, being, having that intimacy because you are in Christ. Um, that is godliness. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that because that just struck out to me, like what godliness um, looks like. Uh, so in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, God can never lie. So because God cannot lie, he keeps his promises. When he promises something, it's a done deal. So eternal life was promised before the world began. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the earth, right? So, and so before the world began, eternal life was already in place. The The plan of salvation was already set in stone. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, and so that, uh, that hope or in hope of eternal life, um, let me read down here, uh, which accords for the sake of faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God who never 
lies promised before the ages began and at the proper time manifested in his word through the preaching which with which I have been entrusted by the command of God our Savior. So Paul was appointed to preach the gospel to the Gentile nations um, uh, for for our sake, he he, um, for our faith, because he wrote so many epistles or epistles, sorry, epistles that um, help us to grow in our faith. You know, help us with our eternal security in in knowing that um, not only him. I mean, John too, but Paul is the the subject, right? And I mean, he wrote Romans, he wrote Galatians, he wrote. I mean, all of his writings, and and if you read them, it, it, <laughs> if you're struggling in your faith, read the books of Paul. You will have a better understanding of your position in Christ, of your of your inheritance, of who you are, um, and you will have an assurance of your faith that you wouldn't get if you were reading uh, the books of the law or the Old Testament um, books, uh, it's very important you be grounded uh, in in Paul's writings, if, especially if you're a new believer. And not only Paul, John too. Uh, there's a lot. But Paul was pivotal <laughs> for gentiles that's why he people say he's our the gentiles apostle um because he was specifically appointed to preach to the gentiles so jesus knew why he chose paul for such a time as 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 that time and it does say here in due time it was manifested in uh manifested his word through preaching so the word of god was manifested through preaching you know of the gospel the word being the gospel was manifested now jesus was manifested he was a word that became flesh and he completed you know the finished work on the cross um the you know he completed uh the plan of salvation where he died uh, he was buried and he rose again on the third day. So the finished work on the cross, that was completed. And that the gospel or the, the, the wonderful description of God's salvation, um, he now preached that. He now preached that to those who heard you know, the hearers, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So I like how it says that eternal life essentially is manifested through the preaching of the word of God. So, and he's saying that how important preaching is you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How beautiful are the feet of those who um, share the gospel. It's by preaching. It's by, it's by the word, the word of mouth. And it was committed to Paul. You know, he was commanded by our Savior to do just that. It, it says in, it's in proper time, at the time that he, you know, he went on his missionary journeys. That was what he was entrusted entrusted by God to to do it was committed onto him and trusted by by God for for him to do and I believe I mean the word you know there are no new apostles today we all are entrusted to preach the word of God you know in a way we're all commanded to and this is not a work this is just out of uh, you know what God has given us, we cannot give what we don't have. We've received the Spirit of God, so we share this wonderful good news. You know, how will people know unless we share it? Okay, and um, and it's 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 wonderful to also say that in this in verse two that e eternal life 
is is a promise. It it's it's it before Christ even came to die, he already had that in place. So there's so much assurance that something that has been planned meticulously before mankind was even created and then for him to present it in time, in the proper time, for Jesus to come into the world at a specific time to die, you know, and he rose again. And then whoever believes the gospel is given eternal life. If so much went into that and is now given to the one that believes, whosoever be who believes, I would think that <laughs> God will do all he can for that to be a permanent um, uh, solution for the sin problem in someone's life, for a sinner. Like, he didn't go through all that for someone to lose it with one, in, you know, a, with an infraction. No, eternal life is eternal. It's eternal. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, there's so, like, do you see how God doesn't miss a beat with, with salvation? His only begotten son? His only begotten son. No, he doesn't joke with salvation. God doesn't joke. People make make it uh, to 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 look as if God, you know, is is <laughs> is just waiting for you to trip up and mess up, and then he he's gonna take back what he he gave you. He's gonna take back the gift of salvation. He no, he can't wait to give it to you. He can't wait once you believe. He's like, oh yes. Let me shower you with my grace. <laughs> like, I mean, God is not someone who who is breathing down your neck like a fire-breathing dragon. No, he's not a dragon. <laughs> the Bible when he talk when it talks about a dragon, you know who he, you know it's referring to El Satan. <laughs> so El Diablo no, God is not like that. Oh, man. He promises you eternal life and he ain't going to take it back from you. So, so, so I, the whole purpose of the video was like just <laughs> was to, uh, to show how acknowledging the truth, you know, like how, what we're doing now, we're acknowledging the truth of the word of God, the truth of the gospel that. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish but have have everlasting life. That is the truth. We are acknowledging the truth and we are we are um agreeing that once we believe we are eternally saved. That is that's acknowledging the truth. That is godliness. That's godliness to God. I mean that's being godly because you 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 agree with the Godhead and what he says. Um uh and then what else? I think that's it. I don't want to belabor these points. Um I guess I was just meditating and I just want to share what I learned. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to leave it at that and say I love you guys and I pray that you're having a wonderful rest of your day, evening, wherever you are. I pray that you are blessed. All right, take care. Bye-bye.